In this video, we're going to do three practice sentences in X-bar theory. The first sentence demonstrates a double adjunct, every window in the building with a broken pane. Okay, so this is a noun phrase. This isn't a sentence, this is just a noun phrase. So we'll begin with an NP. The first thing I want to point out is that in the sentence every is considered a determiner. Uh, sometimes we call them quantifiers, and quantified phrases we'll call them determiners for now. And determiners are going to be daughters of NPs and sisters to N bars. So that is every. Okay, so now we have two adjuncts. And how do we know they're adjuncts? Because we can say every window in the building with a broken pane, or we can say every window with a broken pane in the building, and they mean the same thing. Okay, so we can flip them around, and there's no weird ordering effects. Therefore, they're both adjuncts. Okay, so let's do the with a broken pane. Okay, so it's an adjunct. So it's going to be the daughter of an end bar and sister to an end bar with a broken pane. And the reason why we do this first is to get the word order right. So we always have to do the rightmost adjunct first in our tree, otherwise the word order gets a little bit weird. So we can do with a broken pane. Um, so with is the head of a preposition phrase, and then a broken pane is the complement of with, so that is daughter of a P bar, sister to a P. So NP, now a broken pane, so a is a determiner, so that's going to be daughter of an NP, sister to an N bar. But remember that broken is an adjective, and that is a modifier, so it is also an adjunct. So that's going to be the daughter of an N bar and sister to an N bar. So a broken pain. And again, pain is just going to be the head of the noun phrase. So with a broken pain, that is what the tree for with a broken pain looks like. Now we have to do the second adjunct in the building. So again, daughter of an N bar, sister of an N bar. So in the building. So in is the head of the preposition phrase, and the building is the complement. So once again, the is a determiner, so that's the specifier of the NP. So it's daughter of an NP, sister to an N bar. And then building, of course, is the head noun of the NP. And then finally, window. Well, window is just the head noun of the entire noun phrase. Every window in the building with a broken pane. So here we also demonstrate double adjuncts. So with the broken pane, daughter of an N bar, sister of an N bar, and in the building, once again, daughter of an N bar, sister of an N bar. These are two adjuncts. Okay. And we have to do with the broken pane first in order to get our word order correct. Okay, so that's every window in the building with a broken pane. Second sentence, Dan ate fresh lobsters at the pier. Okay, so in this case, this is a sentence, so we're going to start with a TP. But, ate fresh lobsters at the pier. So fresh lobsters are the thing that he's eating, so this is the complement. Well, at the pier tells us where he ate, so that is an adjunct. So at the pier is an adjunct, tells us where he ate, and fresh lobsters is the direct object, tells us what he ate, so it is the complement. Again, objects are always complements of verbs. Okay, so Dan ate. Um, let's do this in red. So we have a tense phrase to start. Um, subjects are always specifiers of TPs, if that makes a sense. Uh, we don't have bar levels for t's yet, but um, I guess for now we can separate them into noun phrases and verb phrases for the tense phrase. We'll revise this pretty soon. So Dan, well Dan is just a proper name, so this is just a noun phrase on its own. Then finally, eight fresh lobsters at the pier. There's no specifier for the VP, but there is an adjunct. So uh, we can go down to the V bar level. And to get the adjunct, we attach the prepositional phrase as the daughter of a V-bar and sister of a V-bar. And then finally, for eight fresh lobsters, we have fresh lobsters as a complement. So it is the daughter of a V-bar, sister of a V. 
and fresh lobsters will be a noun phrase. Okay, let's do fresh lobsters first. So fresh lobsters, uh, there's no specifier, but there is fresh, which is an adjective, which is an adjunct for the noun phrase. So this AP will be the daughter of an N bar and sister of an N bar. And this AP will go down to the adjective, which is fresh. And then lobsters is the head of the noun phrase, so that will be under the N for fresh lobsters. So eight fresh lobsters, then at the pier. Okay, so at, of course, is the head of the preposition, and the pier, so the pier is the complement of at. The is the specifier of the NP, so it's daughter of the NP, sister to the N, and pier, of course, is the head of the noun phrase. So Dan ate fresh lobsters at the pier. Again, the adjunct, daughter of a V-bar, sister to a V-bar. Complement, daughter of V-bar, sister of V. So these are the differences here. Okay, finally, the third example. My favorite language has complicated syntax and simple morphology. So we're gonna introduce and, okay. Uh, a little bit reluctant to introduce and, but I think it is important to see a coordination at some point. So we'll do it in this practice video. So my favorite language. There's also this possession here. Um, we'll treat it as a determiner for this case. So for my, let's do my as a determiner. And so specifier, essentially, daughter of NP, sister to NBAR, favorite. Well, favorite is an adjective describing the language. So this will be the daughter of an N bar, sister to an N bar, because it's an adjunct. So A bar A, favorite. And then finally N, which is language. That's our subject, my favorite language. Then has. Has complicated syntax and simple morphology. So has complicated syntax and simple morphology. So what does it have? That's the question, right? Well, it has something. So this thing has to be the complement, right? So it has, my favorite language has something. So this whole thing is going to be the daughter of a V bar and sister to a V. So complicated syntax and simple morphology. It, we could say my favorite language has words. So this is gonna be a noun phrase that comes after. But the question is, what do we do with this and? Well, typically what we do is we do try branching for this. So this would turn into this NP goes to another NP. It goes to a conjunction and then another NP. So this conjunction is just and, and then we do the two NPs separately. So complicated syntax. Well, N bar, there's no specifier. Complicated is an adjective phrase, and it's also an adjunct, so it's daughter of n-bar, sister of n-bar. Uh, so a, this is complicated. And then finally, syntax is the head noun for this one conjunct. So this and is called a conjunction. So complicated syntax and simple morphology. So this is going to be the same structure as complicated syntax. They'll look exactly the same. So simple is an adjective phrase, modifying the noun morphology, and then finally the noun morphology as the head. Okay, so in this case, uh, some of the main points, once again, is we have our modifiers for our nouns. Uh, has takes a complement, that's why it's daughter of N bar, sister of V, but, it is a coordinated uh, complement. So coordinated has these words like and or 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 but. And what these do is they take one category, NP, and essentially they coordinate two of the same category. So you take an NP and instead of just having one, it coordinates one NP with another. So my dog, or I have a smart dog and a dumb cat. So a smart dog is an NP, a dumb cat is an NP, 
or my dog is smart and handsome, where smart is an adjective phrase, handsome is an adjective phrase. So it combines them, it coordinates them with and. Okay, so those were three example sentences with X-bar theory. Hopefully by now you kind of have a general idea of where these adjuncts and modifiers go, where complements go. Uh, you won't be scared if you see another conjunction in the future. Um, and you kind of have this idea about where subjects go, where objects go, and where verb phrases go. So the subject will always be on the left side of the TP in English. And of course the verb phrase will contain everything else in predicate. So really, <laughs> when we say in high school, when sentences are comprised of subjects and predicates, we really do mean that. We mean that a tense phrase, a sentence, requires a subject on one side and a predicate on the other side. Okay, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. I'll do my best to answer them. These things are hard, so please ask away.